Hello and welcome to Hobson Bros. This week we're taking a look at the English Bitter. For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Ups and Brews Ups and Brews Welcome to Ups and Brews So listen up students, I have an assignment for you guys before we dive into this week's lesson. So, here it is. Go check out the link down there in the description. It's easy and it's also to support this week's sponsor, Brew HQ. If you haven't heard about them yet by watching our videos, it's the own brew store that you need to check out. And it's all online. You can purchase equipment, ingredients, everything you need to get started or to ste step up your own brew setup. We're proud to have them as partners in the show or for the show. So if you go check him out, please use the link down there in the description. Use the code BROS to get 10% off your first purchase, which is amazing. So thanks a lot, BrewHQ, for supporting the show. You guys, your assignment, please. So now pull up your books and let's dive into this week's lesson. So last week we took a look at Dunkel's, which was pretty cool, this German style beer. Uh, and now we are going to the, I guess, neighbors of Germany in this case, uh, England. Neighbors in the sense of beer making country. So there's three big ones when I think of beer in Europe, and that's Germany, England, and Belgium. In this case, England. England, uh, the English Isles, they create a lot of the basic techniques when it comes to brewing. Uh, you, you know... Germany as being that one place where loggers came from and the loggering concept and even the conical tanks that we use today are all German inspired. But in England, they kind of developed the malt. I mean, you would think that Pilsner was the first malt developed. No, no. In England, they developed the kilning methods to be able to have pale malts, which is something that was unheard of, unseen. Everything was killed over a flame before that. We've got an episode on that, so you can go check it out. But it was a crazy um, endeavor, and it, it's something awesome that really revolutionized the way we brew today. So today we're looking at bitters, uh, in the English bitter, which is a pale ale, a lot different than your North American pale ale, which brings me to this week's question, um, which is your favorite English-inspired American beer? Are you more of an IPA or a pale ale? I know there's you know, a lot of similarities, but the, the base beer in England is a lot different than the beer we are familiar with here. So which one's your favorite? Do you prefer the English style? Do you prefer the American style? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, and Chris, what exactly is an English bitter? Uh, what, what can you tell us about that? Bitters or bitter ales or whatever you want to call them. It's England's most popular real ale style. And what I mean by real ale is a freshly served in a cask, still live beer. If you want to hear more about real ales, we could actually do a video on it. If you're excited about that, then leave a comment down below about it and we'll, we'll make it happen, obviously. But bitters, it's probably one of the most misunderstood styles from us on the side of this ocean, right? Because we, our brains are connected to the bitter name. Yes, it's the bitter version of mild ale, and that's why the name has been pulled out this way. But to be a bit more precise on that, back in the days in the 1800s, England switched their taxation on beer from related to malts to actually ABV-based setup, which means that a lot of the styles at the moment quickly became very, very wide on the range of the strongness of the beer. And when I say strongness, it's the ABV. So you add very low ABV beer ranging to higher, higher, high ABV beers, which were easily, easily recognizable by X's. So 1X was a low ABV beer and 4X is a very high ABV beer. So obviously all this created a trend towards low ABV beer brewing. And... Pairing low ABV beer brewing 
towards consumers that love drinking good beers created this nice trend all across UK. And this is where bitters became one of UK's most favorite style. The reason why it's easy, it's sessionable, low ABV, and you get plenty of good flavors out of it. Yes, obviously you have the options like mild ales and all that, but bitters really took over the whole country and has been a staple in the industry since the dawn of times out there in England. I won't go through all the shtick of the fact that water in London wasn't good and you had to brew beer to actually get some water in your system, but obviously if you know a bit about brewing in general in the UK, it has a fantastic, very rich story. Speaking of rich story, you can't forget about those classic styles like the bitter. If we look at it, it's rooted right there in the style of IPAs because bitters introduced in the brewing style the aromatization with uses of ops. Using ops in the end of boiling process created those aromas and the bitterness in the beer, which is basically an IPA right now. We owe a lot of respect to those classic styles and I'm excited to see more of them back on the shelf. Yes, IPAs are exciting, but if you look at it, we won't get IPAs if we don't have bitters in this market, which I think it's fair. And having breweries revisiting those classic styles, even though they're fantastic IPA makers, would be quite fun to see. Max, if we want to brew a bitter at home on our own brew setup that we got and a recent upgrade from Brew that would be cool, right? How does it work, and what's your take on bitters? Thanks, Chris. Uh, now, this week, we're looking at the bitter and how to brew one. Now, in this case, it's one of those not rare, but occasions where uh, an English beer is supposed to be balanced. And I'm saying one of the rare occasions, or I'm trying not to say rare occasion, but most English beers or most beers from England uh, that people kind of know and recognize are, are porters and stouts and ambers and anything that is a little more malty on the mouthfeel compared to more German beers that aim to be balanced. A, a lager is not supposed to be overly hoppy, overly sweet. It's supposed to be a little more balanced where what we know or what we choose to know about English beers is stouts and porters, which are a little sweeter, a little more caramel, a little more chocolate, and they're a little more on one extreme or another. In this case, the bitter, unlike the name of this beer should be, it aims to be balanced. Uh, it's one of those beers where you do use caramel malts, you do use crystal malts for the color, and you should have a little more sweetness in it, but you're putting in hops to balance out that sweetness. It's a sessionable beer, which means that it's not looking to be overly alcohol. It's supposed to be a little lower between three and five percent beers. And I find that the more I drink these beers, the more I like them. Uh, they're one of those beers where you can have a few and your palate doesn't get tired because of that balance and because of that lower alcohol in this case. Um, now, it does showcase uh, the, the killing methods that England kind of developed back in the day. So it's a more malt forward beer that you would think, but the body is actually more on a medium light side. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You would think that it would be super creamy, very caramel and, and almost like an amber, a little sweeter, but it's really not. These beers are very well balanced. Again, you're using more the English style malt and also English style hop to balance. Uh, it, it's not a tropical IPA. It's nothing that's going to be um, um, like your, your North American IPAs or pale ales. It's very much an English pale ale, so more on the amber uh, side. A little sweeter, but very well balanced with those hops. That's pretty much this beer. Now, I, I hope you've had one before. If not, uh, take a look around. Pretty much every brewery that I've seen has at least tried it once. And even if they didn't call it that specifically, uh, they, they have brewed a bitter. The Butler's Bitter is the one we brewed at the college, which was really good. And it's the one that really got me liking this style of beer. And thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite North American versus English beer was. Uh, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.